Hi guys, Nathan here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my complete video end card tutorial. So I'm going to be showing you guys the full process of how to make the video end card that you can see on screen right now. Now, as this is going to be quite a long video, I'm going to break it up into three chapters, and I'm going to put the annotations on screen now, so that you can choose which bit you want to see. The three chapters are going to be the actual making of the end card template itself, including animation, the creating of the graphics that are going to be your buttons that you want your viewers to click on, and how to put the videos that you want to showcase on that end card. So before we get started, here is a list of the software that I'm going to be using to make this end card. The first one is Adobe After Effects, which can be a pretty expensive bit of kit, but you can get a free 30 day trial so you can actually make the animation for the end card for free. Next up we have GIMP, which is a completely free image editor, so that one's fine. And finally we have Lightworks, which is a free video editor, but unfortunately that is quite a restricted version, so you may need to get the pro version in order to complete this process. Right, let's get started. So as you can see here, I've got Adobe After Effects open, and the first thing I'm going to want to do is go up to the top left and click on Composition and create a new composition. Now, not much really matters on here. You can change the name of it if you want. I really can't be bothered. But basically, you just want to make sure that the width is 1920 pixels and the height is 1080 pixels. That's so you can get 1080p quality. Now, uh, the other thing that matters slightly is the frame rate, which should be about 30. 29.97 is fine. And I would just recommend making it a 30 second duration. Now, you might not necessarily want your end card to actually last 30 seconds, but you want the flexibility in case you do. So that's fine. The background color really doesn't matter because we're going to change that anyway, and that isn't even going to show up. So I'm just going to click OK, and we get this screen here. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do at this stage is press Ctrl and Y, and you get this solid settings menu up. Now this is going to create a new layer and that is actually going to show up. So pick your colours, whatever you want, and I'm going to go for red on this occasion, just so I have something a bit different. So OK, and OK again, and it should match the size of your composition already by the way, and click OK. So now as you can see we've got one of our layers ready and that's all done and that's fine. So the next thing we're going to want to do is do the same again and Ctrl and Y and create another layer. Now I want this one to be a bit more grey of a colour, something completely to contrast with the red, so that seems OK to me and we'll go with that there. Now as you can see that's gone on top of the red one but it doesn't really matter because they're not going to be on top of each other in the final edit. So the next thing we're going to want to do is zoom out a little bit by holding control and using the mouse wheel and then we're just going to move this layer down off the screen completely. That's so that we can get the animation so it actually comes up into view. So once that's off screen you're going to want to do the same with the other background image, the red one and just drag it off the screen like you did with the other one. I'm using the up arrow rather than actually dragging it so that you can keep it steady and level on both sides. So the next thing you're going to want to do is click on the red solid and press P on your keyboard and that brings up this little menu and just click the little timer and that sets it a start point. Now if we move along a little bit, not too far because you want this to come in very fast, uh, say about there and then you're going to want to hold shift and bring this down. I want to go all the way to the bottom and fill up the screen completely. Now as you can see we've got a bit of an overlap issue because we've zoomed out so all we're going to do is zoom in and just correct that. So now that we've got the red solid right in the middle of the image we're going to want to do a pretty similar thing with the light grey solid so click on that, press P and make sure that your timer is right at the start and click the little timer again. On this occasion though we're going to want this to come in slightly after the red one just so it brings down the red one first and then the grey one pops up. So we're going to drag the timer slightly beyond it and we might even want to move this point out a little bit so it stays there until the red one is almost down and then we're going to do a very similar thing and drag up the grey solid whilst holding shift. So we'll drag up the grey solid and I would advise at this stage putting on a guide so click this little button here and click tile slash action safe just so you can see where the exact center of the image is so that you know that you've got it spot on. So I'm going to zoom in again and make sure that that lines up with the middle of the image. So somewhere about there, it might be slightly over the top, but that's fine. It's almost perfect, so that's good enough for me. Now if we get rid of the tile and have a quick look at what we've done so far, we can see that the red image is going to come down and then the grey one is going to pop up, which is perfect. That looks great to me. You can mess around with the keyframe positions if you want, just to get it absolutely how you want it. Personally, I think that the grey image should come up a little bit faster, so if I move that close together, that should now happen. And yeah, that looks a lot better to me. And now you can see that you have an animation of the template coming together. Next, we're going to add the buttons that you want your viewers to click on. So I'm going to show you how to make some of your own buttons later, but if you've already got them, that's great, we can do that now. And all you have to do is go to File and Import Them. So you're basically importing one file. You can do it all at, all at once if you have them loaded in the same location. I personally don't, 
But anyway, you all know how to import a file, so I'm just going to skip this bit and go to the stage where I already have them imported. As you can see in the top left, I have all my images imported that I'm going to make my buttons on my end card. And all that you need to do here is just drag and drop them into new layers. And you're going to want to make sure that they're on the top so you can see them above the layers that you've already put in. So I have a Twitter link, a little link that says outtakes, which is where I'm going to put a video of outtakes that happened in the video. I've got a link saying buy stuff, which takes the viewer to a merch page for my channel. And I've also got a little link saying subscribe, which is obviously the main aim of the end card, so that'd be great if the viewer clicked that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is resize these and place them where I want them to actually end up on the end card. So I want my subscribe button to be somewhere here, my buy stuff button to be a bit smaller than that, and perhaps under there. That looks good. The outtakes button needs to be quite small because it's got to fit underneath the video that we're going to put on and needs to be big enough for the viewers to see. So that's got to go quite low down and I'm going to say about there and make it even smaller than that actually. It only needs to be big enough to just read and that looks to be about the right size already so that's going to go about there. Great and you can see that we've already got the template of our end card and if you want to finish right there that's fine. You don't even need to do any more animation. This next bit is just a little bit of flair that I like to put on the end cards that I do. So if you do want to add that little bit of flair that I do on my end cards to your end cards, then what you want to do is just make sure that your time bar is set just after the grey solid comes in, and you're just going to want to drag these down below where the image is. Now when you do this, I'd suggest keeping them in a similar order to what they actually are going to appear as, because otherwise the animation looks a tiny bit weird. It should be alright anyway, but just for that slight more professional touch, just keep them in order underneath the end card. So once you've done that, it's a very similar process to what we've already done. So just click on one of your layers, click P on the keyboard and set a keyframe. And then do that for each one of the subsequent layers that you've put on. Next you're going to want to move the timer on slightly, not too far. And just hold shift and drag up the image to where you want it to be. Now personally, I like to go slightly beyond where I want the image to end up. So that we can have a little bob up and then down again. So just make them go slightly above where you want them to actually end up. Remember to hold shift while you're doing this or it won't work. So now then, all these layers are slightly above where we want them to end up, and if we actually just play that, it'll still look pretty cool. They'll still come in and just stay there, but what I like to do after that is just to make them bob back down for a cool little effect. So all you have to do is drag the timer along ever so slightly, not far at all, and just hold shift and move them down again ever so slightly. I'd recommend zooming in a bit for this, because otherwise they're going to go down pretty drastically. So just do that on each layer. Remember to hold shift while you're doing this and they should just bob back down once they're on screen. So if we watch that again now, you'll see that the images come in and bob back down once they're on screen. And personally, I like to add motion blur, so all you're going to want to do to do that is just click this little box on each of the layers, just so they look a bit cooler when they come in. One thing that I would suggest doing is on each of your buttons, clicking the last keyframe that you have and pressing F9. That just makes it an easy ease keyframe, so it looks a bit better and a bit smoother when it comes in. And that is pretty much it. So with our end card template complete, we're going to want to export this so we can actually use it at the end of our videos. And in order to do that, you need to go up to composition and add it to the media encoder queue. And hopefully that should load up. So once the media encoder has loaded, you're just going to want to make sure that it's outputting an MP4 format. And you can set the path so it goes to wherever you want it to go. And just click this little play button and it will encode for you and come out as a completely usable video that you can then put stuff onto. If we have a look at the end card now, we should see that it's pretty much finished as for the template. And uh, all we need to do now is add our videos in to make this complete. But for now, I'm going to show you how to make the buttons that actually go on your end card. If you've already done this, please click the annotation at the bottom of the screen to skip this bit and go straight on to putting the videos on your end card. So now I've got GIMP open and in order to create the buttons that go on the end card, we're just going to make a very simple image. So we're going to go to File, New and just set the border as 600 by 600. We can change that later once it actually fits. So for this example, I'm going to show you how to add the merch button that I had. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the background and go to Layer, Transparency and add an alpha channel. Then we can delete that and you get this little pattern that means the image is going to be transparent. Now the next thing that I like to do is add a logo for the site that you're going to be led to. In this case for me it's Spreadshirt, so just go to Google and search for Spreadshirt. And go on Images and just pick a logo that looks like it's right. That one on this occasion looks right, so if we just view the image and save the image, then we can use it for our button. So back in GIMP, all we have to do to import that image is go to File and Open as Layers, and then find it and double click. So now we have the Spreadshirt logo in GIMP, the next thing I'm going to want to do is resize it so that it doesn't take up too much of the screen and just make it 
fairly small so that the text looks bigger than it. I'm going to make it 100 by 100 just so that it looks alright and it stays a square shape. So the next thing to do is to add our text and all I'm going to do there is click on this little text button and just drag and drop just to create a box that we can put our text in and for me as you can see before I wrote buy stuff just for fun you can write whatever you want and obviously this changes for every button that you put in and just resize it so that it fits the box then with the text still selected I would say change the font and personally I use fonts from the website 1001 free fonts because they just look a little bit better than the ones that you get on standard windows but if you're happy with it that's fine but all I'll say is that you can get free fonts out there that look pretty cool the one I've got here is called never say die and I think it looks pretty awesome and that's completely free and I can use it for whatever I want and just resize it so it fits in the box again and then personally I like to resize the box so it only just fits in there and then I can move the text wherever I want just so it looks right against the background. I would also recommend highlighting the text again and changing the colour to whatever you want it to be. In my case I'm going to make it blue just so it contrasts against that grey background and that already looks pretty cool but personally I like to make it stand out a little bit more than that so in order to do that I right click on the layer over here with the text in it and go to layer to image size and then right click it again and alpha to selection. This selects all the text and creates a path around it then go up to the top left and click select and grow and this is where it gets a little bit tricky the amount of growth you need to add a border varies per image and you might just want to tinker around with it a little bit to get the right amount I'm going to go for 6 this time and that looks way way too much so all you have to do is shrink it back down again by maybe 3 and that looks about right so then in order to make the text stand out a little bit more I'm going to go to this bucket tool here and click on it and change the background color to black and then I'm just going to zoom in and fill in the area that is highlighted making sure to do the inside of the letters as well and uh, obviously there's only two insides on this but there might be more on the ones you do just make sure to get them or it looks a little bit weird and that looks pretty cool right there so we could just leave it at that but that would make the image slightly difficult to deal with when resizing so all you have to do really is click image go to canvas size and just resize the canvas so that the text only just fits inside it making it perfect to resize in the later programs that we use it in so there you go guys, that's how I make all the buttons that go on my end cards, and I think that's a pretty cool way of doing it. There are lots of other ways of doing it though, so if you have a better way, please use that. This is just a suggestion. So now that we've got our end card template, the final thing that we need to do is put the videos on that you want your viewers to click on. So as you can see here, I have all the videos I'm going to use, including Comp1, which is the end card itself. And all I'm going to do is create an edit over here, and you get this lovely screen. Now, usually this would be fine, that's one video track and two audio tracks which is how a video usually goes. But as we're putting so many videos in this thing, we're going to need to add some more. So I'm going to right click over here on all and add tracks. Now for video, we need three more tracks because there are three more videos than usual. So that's fine. Right click again and add tracks. And for audio, we need six more. Now this isn't in the drop down menu, so I'm just going to type this in and go on add. Now that looks like a lot of tracks, but don't worry, in the final edit we are going to get rid of some of those. That's just to keep it easy for now. So the first video to put in is the one that you want to appear in the top right of the end card. So for me, I'm just going to use an example, Battlefield 4 content, and I'm just going to place that right there for now in V1, A1, and A2. The next video to put in is the one that you want to appear at the top left of the end card. For this one, I'm going to use the 10 second ninja clip, but I'm not going to put it all the way into the V2 slot, because as you'll see here, it would overlap on A1 and A2. So I'm just going to drag and drop that down into the A3, A4 slots so it doesn't overlap and it doesn't cut out any of the BF4 audio. Even though we're not going to use that, that's just a good practice to have. The final video that you want to show up on your end card will go in the bottom left and on this occasion it's going to be a 200 subs outtake. So same again, I'm not going to drag it all the way to the end of V3 because it will overwrite the audio. So I'm just going to drag that there and drop it down into A5 and A6. And then finally we need to put in our end card itself and that goes in V4 and A7 and A8. Now personally for my end cards I just like the audio from one video to play and I like that to be the bottom left video. So I come over here and right click and then go to delete tracks. And if you want the bottom left video audio to play you'll delete A1, A2, A3 and A4. And click OK. And then, as you can see, we've got much fewer tracks, and only the audio from the outtakes video will be in there. So that looks pretty good so far, but as you can see on screen, only one video is showing up. So what we need to do is come to the bottom right and click on Effects. 
Then we go to quad split screen, which is in video DVEs if it's not already showing up. For me, it is already showing up because that's the one I use most regularly. So you just want to double click that and you'll get this sort of screen. Now the first thing to do on this little menu is scroll down to the bottom and find the bottom left video and unclick this green light on there and that just takes the effect off of the bottom left video which is your overall end card so you'll want that to be full size anyway. Then we can go back up to the top and resize some of our other videos. So obviously the top right video isn't going to be 0.5 by 0.5 scale in this sense. I want it to be smaller than that so I like to put it as 0.39 usually just to give it that little bit off and make sure it's 0.39 both ways and then repeat that for all the other videos. So now as you can see all of our videos are smaller and they look about the right size for the end card but this video here is covering the buttons that we want to show up so all I'm going to do is move it across probably to 0.25 so it lines up with a video above it and because of this outtakes thing underneath it I want that to show up so I'm just going to move it up by one just to make that, that text show up a bit clearer. So now we're done with that effect so we can get rid of the menus and just to tidy things up a little bit I'm just going to clip a lot off the end of this so just mark an end mark and then put an end mark right at the end of the video which is quite a long way back for some reason on here and just close the gap so that we just have our project on screen and no silly spaces. Now the final thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that the videos only show up when the end card is ready. So what I like to do is just scroll along and find the first point at which all the text and buttons are in and in the right position and just hold it there and then just drag and drop our videos into position. They should click in with the timeline as you've set it and you're going to want to do this for all the videos except the end card itself. And the very last thing to do is click near the end card and zoom in as far as you can so that you can still see the end of the end card and just click and then mark a section in and go right to the end of your video and mark a section out and then delete the remainder so that you're not overrunning the end card itself and you haven't just got videos playing on a black screen. And that's pretty much it guys, so if I play this now you can see the finished product and we have a nice animated end card with all the videos and buttons you could ever want. So anyway guys, I hope this helped you out a bit. If it did, I'd be really appreciative of a like underneath or a subscription to the channel. That would really help me out and it'd be very much appreciated. But anyway guys, that's about it for this video. So thanks for watching. I've been Nathan and I'll see you next time. Bye. So now that we've got that level and perfectly in the middle of the image, the next thing we're going to... So now that we've got that perfectly in the middle of the image, the next thing we're going to do... Come on Nathan. So now that we've got that, so thanks for watching, I've been Nathan and I'll see you next time. Bye. Woohoo! Finished! Yes!